Good morning, everyone. This morning, we will going to have our second topic for the semester. This would be on data gathering process and qualitative method. So qualitative method class demonstrate a different approach to scholarly inquiry um, than methods of quantitative research. Yeah. So the qualitative method section of our paper um, is similar to the quantitative um, process, but it also have differences such as involving um, with, a, with, with the processes of, of our data gathering. So also in the design of our case or in our, in our research. And the most, different, the most different thing is our basic intent with the research design that we have employed. It also involves discussing the sample for the study and the overall data collection and the recording procedure. So it has a unique recording procedure in contrast to other design or in contrast to other in contrast to quantitative data. So qualitative approach includes comments from the researcher about their um, role during data gathering. So there is an input or there is a, there is a color or an, um, a perception from the researcher himself about the experience during data collection. So we call it self-reflection and that is unique with qualitative data gathering. So further, there is a basic writing structure of qualitative data gathering. So this morning, I will present to you the unique writing structure of um, data gathering and also the research instrument with qualitative process, okay? So moving forward, these are the things that um, included in our um, qualitative data. So we have here um, fact. Uh, we have here um, key factors that are involved in our qualitative data gathering. So first is the researcher as a key instrument, multiple sources of data, inductive and deductive data analysis, participants' meanings, reflexivity, holistic account. So researcher as key instrument. There is a qualitative researcher, uh, a qualitative researcher collects data themselves through examining documents, observing behavior, or interviewing participants. So the research involves um, an instrument that allows the researcher to record data, but the researchers are the one who actually gather the information and interpret it. So there is a self reflection there. Now, the researchers are the one who, who interpret it, so there should be a, a structured process on how to, how, to process, how to deal with the data. They do not tend to use or rely on questionnaires or instruments, but they have to, we have to uh, process it according to their, to their learnings from the literature review. There are also multiple sources of data. Qualitative researchers typically gather multiple forms of data, so such as interviews, observations, documents, and audiovisual information, rather than rely on single data source. So I will discuss it later this morning. So these are open-ended forms of data in which our respondents share their ideas freely to us. So those who will do qualitative data gathering do not uh, be open-minded yeah. when your participants share their, share their ideas. Do not constrain them by predetermined scales. So do not ask them or do not direct them on your pre-constrained questions. So you have to be, you have to be open-minded and allow your, allow your respondents to share their experiences. You as the researcher will review all of the data and make sense of it. Whatever you have collected, you have to make sense of it. And later on, during the interpretation of data, you organize it into codes and themes that cut across all of the data sources. So with the coding and theming, we will discuss it on the next following week.
Inductive and deductive data analysis, on the other hand, so the qualitative researchers, those group who will handle qualitative um, uh, data gathering, typically work inductively, building patterns, categor categories, and themes. So you start from small things, and then you build patterns, and then you you create categories and themes from the from the raw data that you have gathered. In other words, it is increased from the abstract, from the raw data, you will increase it into abstract units, into big chunks of information. So this inductive process illustrates working back and forth between themes and your raw data until you have established a comprehensive set of themes that is applicable or very, very, um, uh, exact with the thing that you are looking for with the purpose of your study and then also you are asked to do things deductively so deductively is you as the researcher will look back at your data from the themes to determine if you need more evidence that can support each theme so whatever theme you have created from inductive process you will check that theme and you will do deductive reasoning you will look for evidences that can support the theme that you have created so evidences can be can be um, searched online such as principles or laws then this inductive and deductive reasoning or process will Put, will be put together and will be a very important process in the analysis of your raw data. And then we have here participants' meanings. So the entire qualitative research process, your research process, if you are doing qualitative, it will keep you focused on learning the meaning that the participants hold about the problem or issue. So you really have to decipher what is the meaning with the participant's answer, okay? You have to dig in with the real meaning and not just focus on the surface. So we have here also reflexivity. In qualitative research class, inquirers reflect about their role in the study and their personal background, culture, and experiences. So aside from your participants participants um um feedback and background and participants meaning about your research topic there is a process of reflexivity also where you as the data gatherer of a qualitative research should have um input about the topic about the raw data or about the the transcripts from your respondents and then reflect it with your personal background your culture your experiences that will hold potential for shaping the interpretation of your of your results okay that interpretation can advance the meaning of your ascribed data so this aspect of reflexivity is more than merely advancing biases and values in the study but it will help or it will strong uh, it will strengthen the background of the researcher and it will shape the results of the study and also the direction of your study and lastly about holistic account so holistic account you as a researcher should try to develop a complex picture of the problem or issue under study so this involves reporting multiple perspective participants protect perspective and resp um, researchers perspective aside from the perspective we have to identify many factors involved in the situation and generally you will sketch larger pictures that emerge from this results this larger picture is not necessarily a linear model of cause and effect but a model of multiple factors interacting in different ways so that's what makes qualitative very interesting because you can project many multiple fact many factors or you can model multiple multiple factors that interacts in different ways according to the researcher's end and to the participant's end 
So this picture of qualitative results will hopefully mirror real life scenario and the ways that events operate in the real world because that's the very purpose of doing qualitative research design applying qualitative research design we want to check we want to mirror real life events and how it is operated in the real world so a visual model of many facets of a process or central phenomenon aids in establishing this holistic picture okay so these things here are the most important principles in conducting research using qualitative data now moving forward we will talk about qualitative research tools so there are many types of qualitative research tools however the one you should choose must go according to your research objective so you have to ask your Self about these questions we are already done with the proposal but if you want to to um, evaluate your research instrument you can try to answer these questions what are you really planning to find out so if you are going to find out their experiences um, daily experiences in their practice in the hospital or in the community pharmacy you have to focus on that how are you going to observe the target population? So what are the ways that you, you have in mind to observe, especially right now in our pandemic? What's the best tool to observe certain variables or indicators? If the best tool is the, is the use of internet, so that is acceptable, you will do your um, data gathering using direct interview. So that can be the answer to this question.